Welcome everyone. This is Talks at Innovators Magazine, a show about communication on impact innovations. We promote the exchange of ideas and prompt progress among industry experts, leaders, and people that are passionate about the world, just like you and me. Welcome to your new innovation hub. Let's move the day together. Hello, welcome back at Talks at Innovators Magazine. I'm here with Michael Buriskis from uh, Asperitas. Yeah. Hi, Michael. Well done. Hi. How are you doing? I'm very good. And you? Yeah, fine. Thanks. Great. So what can you tell us about Asperitas? What is the challenge that you're trying to solve? So the challenge we, uh, we try to solve is very big, actually. As you might know, data centers they facilitate our digital services. It's a very fast-growing industry. We all make use of the internet, but their uh, footprint is growing in the same uh, same speed, basically. So what we are aiming to build is uh, is a company that enables data centers anywhere in the world uh, of the same sustainability level, but also facilitating the new technologies like uh, artificial intelligence or blockchain. Uh, technology we all want to use but we also want it sustainable and that's what we make the technology for here actually yeah in fact you were telling me that uh, the solutions you provide are considerably more environmentally sustainable than a yeah. normal data sensor was it 55 percent more sustainable yeah so uh, we can build data centers with our technology as we have developed it uh, with only 50 percent of the uh, energy footprint overall so uh, data centers use a lot of uh, energy for cooling. We reduced it drastically with 95%. But we also like to look at data centers more from a holistic point of view, looking at materials, the floor space they need, for example, and also the circularity aspects. So we, we like to have a product design which is very modular and easy to repair, for example. So we applied circularity within the whole product and not only looking at energy efficiency, which is something very new for this industry. In fact, it's true that you're not counting in your environmental sustainability the fact that the residual heat to produce mm -hmm. with the warm water could yeah. actually be potentially used for other uses, yeah. right? Yeah. And that is not counted in this percentage of... No, that's, so. that's right, yes. Yeah. So, so uh, it could be even higher at the end. It could be much higher, yeah. And the, the role of data centers could sh shift basically from a large energy consumer to uh, an energy producer or a supplier, I should say, uh, officially, I think. But uh, so that's a whole different uh, picture for data centers uh, as an outlook, let's say, to the future. I think what is really great about uh, this new solution you provide is that it takes uh, so much less space than mm. normal data centers and it could potentially be a place that anywhere in the world, even if it's a very hot, uh, very cold, um, temperature extremes are not yeah. really a problem, right? Yeah, true. So uh, basically the outdoor environment in terms of temperature or the amount of space is not really a limiting factor anymore for data centers. So I think many people listening to this podcast probably are not aware, but the large data centers from the large industry, internet industry players, they look for places where there's a lot of space where is a lot of energy and where is preferable colder climate, right? So they're limited in their choices. So you find them, for example, in Sweden or in Iceland, which are not the most ideal places to run a data center as the, the end users are limited. So in our opinion, data centers should be able to be anywhere in, on the same sustainability level, wherever they are needed. So that might be uh, also in Africa, it, it might be in Iceland, uh, it might be in Brazil. It shouldn't matter actually. If they're needed there, then they should be able to build it there without a large negative impact. And that's what we are aiming for. It's great how you could have uh, just a, a plug and play data center wherever you want, as yeah. long as you have electricity and water. Yeah. It's beautiful. So on the more technical side, can you explain to us exactly how it works? <laughs> yeah, so it helps if you have been in a data center, but I'll try to explain it. So data centers have a lot of IT equipment and they generate a lot of heat. To be able to function in a healthy way, they need to be chilled basically. And data centers normally do that with air systems. This is the most common way to do that. So they basically push down the temperature by mixing cold air with hot air, which is generated by the IT. What we do is something different. We replace the medium of air with another medium, which is liquid. In our case, uh, dielectric oil. 
and we immerse all the hot components, so the full surface in this dielectric liquid. And what we do is not pushing down the temperature, we only transport the temperature. So that's why actually we don't call it cooling, we bring the hot temperature generated by chips. First it's being captured by the oil system, and after that it's being transported out of the system by water. Meaning that anywhere we could bring out 50 degrees Celsius of hot water if we want to, for reuse. So this is a very different uh, different way of designing data centers, of operating them, and uh, while we only change one medium, right, we replace air with liquid, and this is opening uh, a lot of opportunities. Yeah. And are you the only one in the market doing this kind of innovation, the kind of this disruption? Yeah. Um, why is your innovation standing out? Actually, that's an interesting story. So in the 50s and the 60s, liquid-cooled supercomputers or mainframes were actually already uh, in development by IBM and Cray. But supercomputers and how we build data centers now for the use of cloud is very different. So a supercomputer is being invested in every five to seven years. It's static. After seven years, it's being replaced uh, by a new system. So it's a very simple, straightforward approach of making something what's called a data center. A cloud data center, they might want to start today with one or two systems and if the customer demands they want next week 100 other systems and if the customer demands they want to have a data center in, in Dubai or in uh, or in Taipei where you have been or in Australia wherever the customer wants so a lot of scalability is needed the flexibility is needed uh, nowadays sustainability so the approach of using liquid to cool down electronic components is not new what we have done, we have spent some time uh, on developing a product which is plug and play for the purpose of cloud data centers. And this was new, so still today there are other solution providers who make uh, liquid-based solutions for supercomputers, for example. For us, the approach of the market is very different, and you see that already on the product design, as, as you have seen it actually in our tech, tech lab. It's a plug and play solution, right? And that's for one reason, that we can scale it and put it anywhere where our customers want to. Are you encountering any issue with uh, expanding and making this uh, technology mainstream? Yes, of course. So there's some kind of road you have to take from technology development to large-scale deployments, I would say. So that counts also for us. So we have worked two and a half years on a very innovative technology solution. And uh, like we were talking earlier on, the, for me, that's very different of having a technology or having an uh, innovative company, right? So right now, ourselves, we're in the phase of bringing this technology to the market, and therefore we have to also build a very effective company. That means that we need to work together with a lot of other companies to get projects done, basically. So it's not as straightforward as, uh, as you would like it to be. There's a whole route you have to take and you have to convince a lot of stakeholders. And for us, uh, one of the complex things is that it's a global market. So uh, we're based in Haarlem in the Netherlands where there are a lot of data centers based here, but a lot of data centers are also not based here. And they also are interesting uh, to approach with our technology. Actually, the, the warmer climates are probably a, even a better match for us, uh, for our technology, right? So our our playing field is is, is global, which is uh, is one of the challenges, of course. And then there's um, it's a relatively young industry with well established with big players, with some smaller players, but with a very uh, strong focus on uh, standardization, on uh, safety and security, because that's the main purpose of data centers to secure our data and make sure that they always run, for example. So there's very less room for experimenting. And right now we see that other large end users for our technology, they, they have roadmaps you know, to apply new technologies. So they start with small deployments, with some testing and piloting, and if that's successful and has the desired results, they will scale up. And usually it's, it's two, three years of a development roadmap. Uh, and we are part of that those roadmaps, basically. So we are more a partner than a supplier, I would say, at this moment of time, which uh, which is very interesting because we learn a lot as well, of course. So uh, I mean, we had, a, I think, a great idea with the technology, but when you get the feedback from from customers and end users, then you come much closer to the benefits they are looking for, right? So you start innovating again, and that's what's happening here every day. So yeah. Yeah, I saw the, the right before the whole uh, development uh, 
process of uh, yeah. what is now but yeah. uh, your product and the first one I had the two heaters the two house heaters inside yeah. that was really funny so yeah. it's really going fast because when did the company start so uh, it started in 2014 with a small group of people actually um, with a very well the idea was similar to make a modular small data center liquid cooled uh, but the the approach, the application was was different. Uh, what we had in mind, we were aiming to make micro data centers, as we call it, on large ocean-going vessels, and uh, so that's a different application. But as you can imagine, ships and on oceans, uh, crossing different climate zones within uh, limited time, it's a very challenging environment to run data centers. So actually, it's one of the best. Uh, scenarios to design a data center for because you will know it's very secure and proof and stable right so at some point i think 2015 the decision has been made to switch from the shipping industry as an application as the main market to data centers which have very urgent needs to cut their energy demand which is a very fast growing industry uh, our core team has experience in the data center and cloud industry so actually it all made sense but the starting point was different so that's also an interesting route you're taking as a company, uh, we still have the designs uh, from, uh, from this product. It was ready to produce basically and we were pretty late with making this decision to shift to another industry. And uh, But I'm happy we, that we did so because this is a very fast growing industry with uh, f uh, global demand and th there's so much energy consumption going on there. So our mission is much more, much, having much more impact directly on, uh, on an industry right now. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, just something that is going uh, to expand in the future. Yeah, it's not an option. Exactly. Yeah, it's uh, you know we discussed it earlier uh, when we were having the small tour in the tech center. But it's a very strange industry, as I uh, as I tried to explain. It's an industry which is not shrinking that much. It's only growing faster or slower, and in that way, it's uh, it's of course it's an interesting industry to be in. Uh, but the pace is very high. As you and I are using more digital services, the demand for data centers will expand. And uh, there are still large parts of the world who do not have this uh, access to the internet as we have it. And what will happen if they will want to, and they will want to at some point, then there's a whole new impact basically on, on this industry. Well, so, I'm just yeah. thinking if populations, for example, in Africa could have access to internet uh, more easily, they will really be able to to have all the information and then maybe they need to commercialize their produce so their yeah. products with real prices and not being scammed by buyers and that would uh, of course uh, start to a, a change in the whole economy of the of the country or the continent yeah here we have a digital economy right and i think there will be countries who are aiming for that as well so there's still a lot of development going on on that side and they need the right in infrastructure as well to, to build on. And for that, you need data centers. And that's one thing. And then on the other side here, we are advancing our digital technologies with artificial intelligence and blockchain and other uh, visual uh, technologies, right? Uh, virtual reality, gaming, for example, or fintech. Those are all developments going on right now. And for that, we need new digital infrastructure, which is better in facilitating this kind of applications. And that's something what we do also very well. So. As a company, we have two drivers. One of them is the sustainability side, and uh, the other one is uh, technology driven, right? The demand for new, as we call it, emerging digital services. And in terms of the cost, how does it compare to normal, normally built data centers? Yeah, so data centers, they, um, you know, they are built in different levels of security and of advancement, let's say. And uh, the ones most common known, like from Facebook and Microsoft and Google, they're expensive to build, uh, 100 million plus per facility. So it's uh, pretty expensive. And they spend a large chunk of that uh, budget on cooling facilities, on the building, the space, and, and power, of course, on the operational side. We have made now a solution that it's the need for advanced buildings is very limited. We as you saw, it, we can apply it every in every building, basically. So it's on the capex side, the capital investments, it's uh, it's a reduction. But the biggest reduction, of course, there's on the operational side where we take away uh, half of the energy costs, let's say. And this is for for data centers is the most important uh, part of their business model. I would. Do you have any? 
uh, final remarks or takeaways that you feel like it's good to give to the people listening to this podcast? Well, the, the people listening to this podcast, they're into innovation in general, right? Yes. So for me, and I've spoken uh, lately quite often about it with other people, they, they ask us about the speed of development and uh, the hurdles we have to take, right? like the ones you're asking for. And uh, I've been working on other innovations uh, prior to Aspiritus as well. And the funny thing is that I find that the steps you have to take as a company from an ID, let's see, let's say, to a technology-ready product to a successful company is similar in, in different, uh, different circumstances, different kind of technologies. The only thing you can do, and that's also limited, is speed up certain steps. You can hardly skip any of them, so you can only speed up. Some of them will take longer or slower. And in our case, we we talk a lot about it with uh, with the core team of can we do this faster? Uh, are we doing the right things? And in the end, we we know exactly how the route will go, uh, and it's almost predictable. That's very funny to see. So you also have to be patient. Uh, this maybe I would like to share with your listeners that uh, you can speed up some things, but in, for some things you just have to be patient and and have a plan and uh, be aware and realistic that it will take you some time in uh, in getting the successful innovation on a larger scale, let's say. Thank you so much for the tour and uh, this talk. The insights that you gave are really uh, important and I'm sure they're going to spark quite some inspiration and hopefully innovation. I hope so, yeah. yeah. You're welcome. Thank you for uh, stopping by. Thank you so much. I hope to see you soon back here. Yeah, sure. Thank right. you. Thanks.